Welcome, everyone. Today, we are very lucky to have Lisa Reardon with us to talk about a fascinating approach to EFT tapping called quantum EFT. She's one of the few people in the world certified in this particular approach, which is going to give you some really interesting, um, fascinating tools that you might be able to apply for, for yourself right after listening to this. Lisa is also a mentor in EFT Universe, where I recently completed um, clinical EFT certification. So she has a broad range of experience with this, and we're very much looking forward to learning more. So thank you, Lisa, for being here today. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. And I'm, I'm going to assume that people watching this who would click on a video about quantum EFT are probably already familiar with EFT tapping. If for some reason you're not and you're still watching, um, I'll link to a video that just gives sort of the overview of what it is. But it's something I've loved for a long time. And I first came across it really through YouTube and, and people like Brad Yates. And um, what was your original exposure and, and maybe your original training with EFT? Oh, gosh. Yes. So I, I'm one of the earlier doctors from the late 90s, actually, uh, with um, Gary Craig, who who okay. developed uh, EFT, as in the algorithm of the the face and the upper body points. So I found him. I think the universe wanted me to find it, um, and because I could feel how it helped to regulate my emotions, I thought, "Oh, there's something in this because it's helping me get into the body instead of just dealing with my thoughts. Mm -hmm. It was letting my body speak." Um, so, yes, I um, used it with myself. And then in 2010, it was 2010, 2009, when the World Tapping Summit um, with the Ortners and um, carried on doing that every year. And then I thought it's about time I got some certification because I was getting the nudge again from the universe to say, Lisa, I need you. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to need your help to deal with anxiety, depression pressures of life so that was um and I wanted something that was backed with sound science so mm. um and I saw some churches work so I so that's kind of the route that I've taken uh to get with clinical EFT and then mm. my trainer who trained me in clinical EFT is was the founder of quantum EFT and that spoke to my soul so we can go into that more if you like. Uh, oh, absolutely. But, yeah. yeah. Is that Jenny? Jenny Johnston? Yeah, that's Jenny Johnston. So she developed, um, she got curious about putting EFT in with working um, with time, place and space. So working more in the, in the um, quantum field, if you like, that anywhere across time, place and space we're connected with all of it, like we can't not be. And so she's been exploring that and developed uh, a program. And I just went, yeah, this is speaking to me. This this feels true. And uh, so, yeah, got curious and got qualified. So it's it, it's uh, an honor to be able to be part of that and uh, let people experience it. And great deep healing at the root causes can really happen for people. So here Very I am. Very cool. Yeah. So this this is what it will be fun to talk about because I just maybe it's a small sample size, but my personal experience is usually the kind of person who's looking at something like EFT, certain open mindedness to begin with. And it's often not a big jump to start talking about even what you just open the door with a little bit, things like energy, which of course is part of EFT, but then you can get into things like time and space and quantum and that's actually becoming a lot more popular too you know joe Dispenza is getting very popular and he emphasizes the quantum a lot in terms of um i think it's become a useful um i guess i would use the word non-religious way <laughs> to help a lot of people conceptualize this idea of connecting to something that is non-physical and like yes. bigger than the body like when you use the word quantum even maybe not necessarily what how quantum eft specifically is defined but i'm just curious what that evokes for you because i think as soon as people see quantum eft each person who sees it already has a certain idea yeah 
Oh, great question. And I'm certainly no quantum physicist. Yeah, so it's, it's, a very personal, it's a personal energy. Uh, so my description of it would be there, there's, I, in my physical form, I'm in, limited in this physical form, but I feel that there is a bigger part of me. So in that, there, so I am connected to something as a bigger part of me. And there is also, I don't know, so I had an experience of dealing with things in this physical life, let's say about fears and that sort of thing, but the pattern would keep showing up. And one of my limiting beliefs or one of my core beliefs was around it's not safe to speak up. Mm. And it wasn't anything to do in this life, but there was like a real deep stain on wood essence of a memory. I couldn't, I didn't have a picture, I did, but it was just this feeling of this, this is deeper than just this lifetime. And I'm not a past life regressionist either, and, and, and but we do start to dance in that as a possibility of, um, as a soul, let's say, there, there was something um, when I experienced a quantum EFT session, I, I literally got an image of, um, they used to burn healers and um uh, educators, if you like, at the stake. It wasn't safe to speak up and back in that energy of that lifetime. And I, I just got this image and it was like, and it was so clear. And I, you know, I I just went with it because it was speaking to my soul. It was like this, I remember this. So it wasn't thought. It was a, my body remembered somehow. So the quantum, you know, the scientists have talked about, some of the scientists were saying that, you know, we've got our 3D DNA, but they were calling the rest of the DNA junk DNA. Literally used like, the term junk DNA. Literally right? yeah. using the word junk, and it's like, but our creator, <laughs> whatever you choose to call that, creator, mm -hmm. source, universe, God, you know, it doesn't make junk it all that probably meant was they didn't understand what that other 97% is. And as they're now able to study more of the quantum mechanics, and I um, certainly can't go into descriptions about that, but they're starting to appreciate that actually we have multidimensional layers of our DNA that, that are held there in a magnetic form, that, that all our um, lifetimes, if you like, are stored in that multidimensional layers of our DNA, and it can be expressing in this present three day three D form that we are here now. So it it starts to get into that real creative soup, if you like, of connection and energy uh, energies that are just sort of familiar somehow. Yeah. yeah. So it's sort of putting a framework to what I've certainly and specifically experienced working with you, which we could talk about in the, in a minute, sure. but um, that I think many people can relate to the idea of there is some what feels like very deep pattern, some deep fear, some deep sense of oh, you, like, maybe I need to be perfect, or I'm always afraid that people are like coming after me or that it's just not okay to speak my feelings. And you work, even if they are the person who's like working on themselves, doing EFT, um, for example, they don't find anything specific. You, you mm. do not find a specific event. The, the relationship with their parents does not match the energy they have around not feeling safe. And that there is something embedded in us, even though neither you or I can get into the quantum physics of it all. but that there are traces of things, whether that's literally from the past, um, is almost irrelevant in the context of this being a tool to help us work through stuff that you can't necessarily pinpoint a specific event and mm -hmm. to not let that um, be a place where, where you get stuck, which is, I've experienced that can happen when there doesn't seem to be a logical explanation, yeah. even in some inner work in EFT, people can get stuck on the idea of, well, but I have to find an originating cause that makes sense to me. And I think opening the door to that, because I trained with someone who had a burned at the stake image. I worked with a client yesterday who had that come up 
who's so you're working with someone and images and feelings come up that feel like they happened they don't yeah. necessarily feel like we all can know the difference between oh, i'm seeing an image of someone being burned versus i remember this the way i remember that thing in fifth grade it feels like there's a a connection to it is that kind of what you're describing with the, mm, like the, the specifically right. gets into ways of in, in, investigating that Yes, so the, um, you don't have to believe in order for this to work. So the language that I use when I'm working with someone, like, um, a case of a, um, a person who didn't believe in past lives. So that's okay. It's not about me putting my, my beliefs onto them. All I would invite people to do is to be open to the possibility of if there's a pattern that's playing out in your life, mm-hmm. And going at it through a conscious and even with EFT, like what is the emotion to do with this present day event? And it still keeps showing up. It may be that it's not getting back to the core, like where it first began. Mm -hmm. So what I said to this person was, would you be willing to at least accept if I use the words with you, It is my intention to process and release this right back to the origins of wherever it began. So I'm not telling them wherever it began. And so what that does is it's telling the the unconscious, the subconscious, so it's getting out of here because this is the gatekeeper of don't go there, don't go there. But then if if we're tapping at the same time, we're inviting the body and what is stored in our cells, what is stored in those multidimensional layers, um, it might just come up with a, like, I don't know, a feeling or or some imagery, which at the conscious mind might kick in and go, but I don't believe in past lives. But the body is saying, here it is, here it is. So if we just at least have someone be open to just, just, just be open to what comes up. And let's just tap anyway and follow it and see what what comes out at the other end of it. So there's no having to see anything. Mm-hmm. We just go. It's very much client-led. It's a very gentle process. I mean, you've experienced it. Um, and we just we just let the body speak. We let the 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 unconscious speak. Uh, and it may have been the first time it's truly had a time to to actually say what's still or, or express in the way the body does, the language of the body, is feelings and emotions and imagery, to actually let that out. Mm. Uh, one of my clients, when I when I worked with her, she has a history, she's present day, she, um, of complex post-traumatic stress uh, disorder, and she's under the care of a team as well, and I'm part of the support team. And when I we did this wherever it began, she said, and I said, Where are you? And she said, I'm in I'm in utero. I'm in my mum's, I'm in the womb. And um my mum has just she'd lost two babies before mm. me. She was told to get pregnant again straight away. And I'm that baby. She said, But mum is so stressed. So what happens for that baby is she's been absorbing all of those stress hormones. And so she had come out as a fearful child, you know, through no fault of anyone. It was just showing up in her. She's in that soup of stress. So what we did was go back and give that little one, like like bringing in, we did sparkling uh, glitter amniotic fluid of love and I'm safe. And then we did working on the mum, tapping her, tapping on her. So we can do that in time, place and space. Mm. Let's just give the mum what she needs because she's, you know, so we can go along that timeline. And this was in present day. So we did her present day timeline for doing quantum. So it doesn't have to be past life as such. It, it's just wherever, whatever pops up, we go where we go. So mm. That's beautiful. So it's it's a bit of a opening the door or setting a framework where whatever comes up from the system, mm. we are treating that as the guide and the place to go and sort of this invitation to um almost disregard whether or not it makes sense logically and so there's like an emphasis on that as opposed to some other um 
frameworks where where the emphasis may almost lean into okay let's find the event in fifth grade for example this is sort of yeah. like if if i'm seeing myself as a you know samurai this is something that actually happened to me uh 15 in 100 years ago instead of discounting that or trying to like understand the symbolism of it it's like no we're just going to go with that experience and let whatever unfolds unfold and i can tell you from from my experience i think anyone listening to just start opening to this it it can be super valuable even in your own exploration to just start to because luckily I, I kind of learned this earlier on to think of what comes up from the body and the nervous system and the imagery as being the the source of the information my mind might interpret it but it's not the source it's just the interpreter so if the bet whether it literally happened whether i literally was a samurai in some quantum space-time thing or that's the symbolism that mythologically my nervous system could best represent what was actually being stored if we let ourselves just go with that it can go into really deep places and i know from experience that it's not want to make the distinction that this isn't like you get a reading and someone goes like oh you were a uh, you were your mom was stressed you were stressed now i have an intellectual understanding and uh, oh now i can explain why this ptsd is appearing because i have this uh perhaps factual story which doesn't i mean not to diminish it but doesn't really accomplish it that much when you're in this process you are you feel yourself there it's again as real of as a memory and so you are actually experiencing yourself or you're experiencing yourself w w on the stake where the you know the ashes or whatever it is is starting to be burned and you actually feel that process taking place and when you're being guided through the tapping you are actually sending the calming signals and and doing all the great stuff that eft does to that very alive energy so you're actually processing things as opposed to getting a um reading of your past that you can now use to explain your emotions right. that don't necessarily change mm, that's right and and i don't although i work very intuitively with my guides and higher self this isn't about that so i'll maybe we'll get nudges but it this is very much about it as with all EFT, it needs to be client-led, as in what is showing up for the person themselves. So in that case, the one with the with the person on the stake, so let's say they have an essence of that. In that case, it's not about re-traumatizing the person that they have to feel that. So it's a freeze frame of that memory. Let's get her, him or her, you know, them out of there. As the, like get them out, like freeze frame it so that yes. they don't have to feel that again. And in cases like that, so we're now going to start getting into as a soul, a soul in a human form, having that soul go and return, go up to, if you're into like the whole soul planning, like what is the life purpose of that soul choosing that lifetime where they ended up being on the stake. Mm. So have them float up and go and get like the higher learning. So when we're in in survival mode, we can't access that higher wisdom or the higher purpose of why we're here. Mm. So if we have that soul, then go and connect back to that soul planning meeting with their soul family who are all agreeing to play certain roles, like even the crowd that were, you know might have been watching that horrible event take place you know whatever that was having that soul being able to look at it from a higher purpose like why did i choose that mm. at a soul level so it starts to open up more around actually i created that as a soul i i wanted i i came in i had a woman earlier this week and we, we did this a version of it and she said i kept trying to come back in to, to a lifetime to bring my healing message 
And every time I got taken out, like, so we were working on mm -hmm. the energies of that lifetime didn't support the gifts that I had to bring. So she had a, a higher learning around, I keep trying to bring in my gifts. Mm. So we, we worked with that. And then present day, the language was tapping in. Those energies back then didn't support it, but the energies of today do. And now it's my time to show my gifts. Now it's time to shine. So it's like getting the learnings from that, but then also bringing it back into present day to bring those gifts in and move it across the timeline in present day. So I don't know if I'm making sense, but it's, but it's a very powerful process once you clear things at a core level because then it lets us free ourselves to become amazing like we're not limited by old energies it's very freeing so as an entry point we're looking at essentially like any good healing in theory we're, we're trying to get to a root cause but this is opening the gate to a way wider interpretation of where that root cause might be so it's sort of going beyond that perspective of, well, the root cause must be something from Evan as a baby to Evan as an adult to forget all of that and just explore what comes up as we follow the energy, which can start with something as a symptom or a, a feeling or a pattern. And as we do it, and we work and we just let the images and the emotions and come up and not limit it on the facilitator side. And so I'll ask you about some of those tools that you use to kind of take it to that place once the, but we're, we're starting with a much wider timeline and a wider perspective on what quote unquote root cause actually means. Mm -hmm. Because the root cause may may go back beyond what we physically know in this present day life it may it may be some some curse that was put on you know they used to put curses on people mm. so you know if someone comes in present day and they feel cursed mm -hmm. you know but it doesn't make sense in this so they may have that in their kind of ancestral trauma which has come through the lineage, generational trauma. You know, it's coming through the lineage of that. So that's a burden that can weigh heavy. If it and and we won't necessarily, it can't be understood consciously. But our, you know, our bodies have. It's like don't do that, don't do that. Like it's sending out this this warning signal of don't go there, don't go there. It's not safe to speak up in public or or whatever. And uh, it limits us. Those are those become limiting beliefs. But if we go back to those core beliefs, yes, it might come from a way earlier time that we didn't even know about. And I think one of the useful things about that for, for those who are open to it, and I think the more you've experienced something that doesn't make logical sense, the more open you are to hearing things like this, because it starts to, you hit the wall enough times and you're like, okay, clearly, whether whatever I believe stops mattering as much <laughs> and it's like there has to be something else to this and to be willing to kind of explore from a perspective of yeah this this could go beyond what makes logical sense or go beyond a specific event but i think it's really important in the context of like self-compassion which is probably one of the things i talk about the most on this channel in terms of like tapping and inner work, because a lot of inner work, especially from a modern perspective, is very, at least Western, gets very self-helpy and very like, find the problem, find the block, mm -hmm. fix that block. Where's that limiting belief? Oh, the fear of speaking up, that's just a limiting belief. You just need to tap away that belief. And that makes you feel kind of inferior when, when it's not just going away. You can't find a cause. But when you start to realize like, no, this can be this, there can be deep ancestral traumas and other things connected to this. Suddenly people stop being so hard on themselves and going, 
yeah, this wasn't just a simple little, oh, I'm afraid to speak up because I'm weak, which is often the modern interpretation. Oh, I'm just afraid to speak up because I'm not man enough. Meanwhile, you start opening the floodgates, you're like, whoa, okay, no wonder I couldn't just like do a couple videos or um, read a book and, and get rid of this and I'm beating myself up for something that actually goes way deeper. Have you found that reaction with people? That's something I've oh. seen before. Absolutely. And and I think you've really um, hit the nail on the head. It, this is about having loving compassion. You know, there's there's no one has ever done any growth or learning out of a fear or a beat me up kind of, you know, mm -hmm. where our, our inner critic or our inner voice might be saying, oh, you should be doing better than you are now. Like no one ever grows in that sort of energy. So this, the, the frame that I like to hold, and I, look, I've been through my own journey of this, you know, there was this why why is it though although i've got these gifts i was keeping myself hidden for so many years mm -hmm. you know i had a voice an inner critic that was trying to take me out and it wasn't until i got the wider it's it was more like a knowing it's like oh now my now i get it it's like it isn't just about it isn't anything that's happened this life but in my bones and in my i felt it to be true it was like once i got and I have held that, and I had someone hold that loving, compassionate space for me to let me plug back in and get that knowing. Then I could heal that. And now I'm released. Mm. Like that, you know, we talk about emotional freedom techniques. So emotions, mm. freedom, freedom from self, freedom from limiting beliefs. Once, once that's free. It's like it is like those peeling the layers of the onion, but it, it literally is like, oh, now I've pulled that weed out right at the like right at the roots. It's absolutely been pulled out. And those gifts just get to, I was looking at the flowers behind them hmm. and behind. You know, it's like now let's it's time to shine. Nice. Um, so we can try and use the conscious mind to motivate us, and that will only work so far. The ego, you know, working on that um, conscious energy will only take us so far. But if we hold a space of love and compassion and curiosity, I wonder, I wonder where this first began. I'm open to being taken to where this is, whether it consciously it makes sense or not. I'm open to seeing what, what wants to be revealed because I... I'm tired of this pattern and it's time for me to step through this now. You know, like we get quite instructive with it to go, just mm. take me. What's the worst that can happen? I, I still keep my same pain and misery. You know, what's, <laughs> that's a choice. So, yeah. It's something. interesting because it seems like a lot of this has to do with increasing levels of surrender. You know, how much yeah. control do you feel like you need to be in with the technique and all none of that is bad or wrong, but the it's sort of getting this comfort level of like, look, I don't understand any of this. Why don't you, why don't this pain or trauma or my body, you just take me on whatever journey and I, I become less and less the detective who's like trying to look at the data and trying to unpack it and being more like, okay, you, you lead the way client led but also like energy led as mm -hmm. far as where it where it takes you and i wanted to ask you um because when we did i don't know it was maybe our second or third session together there was a point where okay it's like okay we're doing tapping we've got an issue i i have plenty of issues so whatever it was that day and there was a like a distinct moment where you said would you be interested in I don't know if you specifically said like, would you be interested in quantum EFT, but there was a crossroads where it could have gone very, let's say clinical and it could have, could have gone quantum. Now, and in that moment, like what's the difference in terms of how you, if I had said do clinical versus do quantum, what are, what are the differences in those beginning steps? Okay. Okay. So um, if the audience, like, so for clinical EFT and the word clinical being implied that there's a set algorithm, 
we use the the sub the subject of units of distress to measure the intensity of an emotion or a feeling at the start, and then we remeasure that at the end. So it's quite it, it's using a quantitative measurement uh, to clear and and working on yeah. So so it can be used in research. So that's basically where the name clinical comes from. It's uh, it's something that's reproducible, and. Right. So the, the the challenge I have, even though I'm a, a, a an EFT mentor as well, so I have clinical EFT students, so I have to have my clinical hat on. Yes. Um, but I so love working in that sort of quantum field. And at that stage, you were a student, so I was sort of doing the clinical, I suppose, as a way to model what is clinical EFT to help you on your studies as well. Yes. But then it became very clear for me, I got the nudge, which is my intuition to go, this man is ready to, there's a, there's some, I could feel yeah. there was so much possibility of this energy is, there's something else for him if he wants to go there. So I always do it as an invitation. And I'm totally fine with either, like we would have got results staying with the clinical, just following the body, whatever it's speaking absolutely fine a really good set of tools but I could feel because you've done a lot of work on yourself and have cleared a lot and you're willing to work hard and, and a great client to work with by the way I um I I just sense that you're you're curious to go where this really goes so I just offer it and you totally said yes please I was I'm keen <laughs> so we did and so that's where our, the the language starts to be I'll, you know, there is a sense of, yes, we're here in a physical form, in a 3D form. We are something, a bigger, bigger uh, part of something bigger. So, uh, yeah, we do start to bring in guides and higher self. So I, I will ask someone, what is your sense? What is your words around a non-physical support team? Like, who would that be to you? So I want to get, if A, if they believe it or not, uh, or if they've got words they would prefer me to use. So I'm not pushing any models of the world onto anyone. I'll just right. go, what is their sense of, are we just here in this 3D physical form, I, this only body? Do I believe I'm bigger, part of something bigger? So I'll just follow that lead as well, and I'll start bringing in words of, you know, it is my intention, my instruction, asking my guides and higher self to help me process and release this wherever it began, this pain in my stomach, you know, whatever it is. We still work with the body's sensations or all this fear, all this fear, even if I don't know where this fear came from. Yes. I want to be free of it because it's blocking me and I want to be free. You know, so we'll just stay using with the client's words, but we start to open up more possibilities. And then, you know, I'm... You again bringing in the um with the DNA, so our three D DNA in this body this time, but then opening up to the possibility, and um, I instruct the multi dimensional layers of my DNA where all my lifetimes are stored to process and release this pattern. I'm stepping through this window of opportunity now. So you're starting to bring in, we don't have to go into each and every time. So we can be more instructive with this and say, it's like pushing the delete button on a folder on your computer. Mm. It's like this pattern is done. <laughs> so we don't have to go, you know, we might have to work with a couple of um, events, but actually... Mm -hmm. We are way more powerful if we truly believe and truly know how powerful we are. We can just go, I'm going to step through this limiting pattern now. You know, once you've cleared that core trauma, it just, it. I, I'm going like this because it's like the ripples. I don't know what your experience was, but it's like the ripples continue. It's gentle, but it's powerful. Yeah, I'll... I'll i'll happily share my mine in detail um and the so there's some different questions early on that sort of open again they in the language themselves they sort of imply looking at something a little more beyond the scope of the body or the recent events i mean 
if you ask someone what's your relationship to the idea of higher guides or higher self you've set a very different tone <laughs> you know that's not something yeah, necessarily you say that to someone. component yeah. <laughs> yeah. and so and if someone says absolutely that i don't believe in that i won't it, that's okay because I'll work with whatever language works because the body knows it doesn't actually matter. You don't have to believe because so, you, while you're tapping, it still works. So that's okay. It's that's great. Right. Yeah. So some of the um, areas that get introduced in quantum are this pers like perspective of a higher self or guides, um, soul, like you mentioned, watching from above and actually using the language of soul or soul family and choice. Um, you mentioned there was something else that just was just escaped my mind. But um, yeah, the guides, higher self, uh, a DNA, and the idea mm -hmm. of actually sending a message or an instruction to, to, the, to the DNA. Are there any other things that are sort of in the toolkit of quantum? That so we'll bring in the word Akash, the human Akash, which is the, the summary of all our lifetimes. Uh, which is stored in the multidimensional layers of our DNA. So it's always part of us. So that's another. Um, and so we those lives are stored there, but also the gifts. Mm -hmm. So anything we've learned in our life, our, you know, we learn things. We come here, we learn, we clear stuff and we learn. That's all still part of us and we can access those. So once we've cleared that survival part, that um you know the limiting beliefs and things then we can start to go into higher purpose so what is my life purpose what am i here to learn and once we get a sense of that life purpose it's like i actually now don't need to suffer anymore because i know my life purpose i've got my learning now let me play you know so yes the the akash so Jenny Johnston, back in 2012, being a very experienced EFT practitioner and trainer, met with um, Lee Carroll, who channels uh, Cryon. So the work comes from Cryon, who's a, a collective consciousness, who's, um, I don't know if people are familiar with the work. So a lot of that, where they're talking about the human Akash, the higher self, the soul, so that's what the blend of where this is, uh, where this has come from, where the quantum EFT has come from. Oh wow! So mm. there's there's a channeled work component that. Yeah. Yes. It's he that so, is a book that already exists, or yes. or this well, was unique so, to quantum EFT. So Monica Morani, who is Lee Carroll's partner, has written a book um, to summarize the teachings of cryon okay. which explains around the human akash and soul and higher self and it, it's 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 got a lot in there but she's yeah. she's collated a lot of the channelings over the last 30 years so there's a lot in there um jenny johnston's got two books that she has written one is tapping into past lives mm. so where she talking about the protocol so you're, you're saying about the words there's a sort of language that helps facilitate letting the body go where it wants to go um and the, the other one is your past life inheritance so she's got two books on her website uh, which people can if they're curious to go and have a look or have a look at her work on her website um she's at quantumeft.com.au so She's got information there. And as the founder of this work, uh, I'm de definitely doing a shout out to her. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't had the chance to work with her one on one yet, but I've been on some of the, the calls as a student where, yeah, I love her. She's great. I mean, I haven't had much personal and any real one on one interaction with her, but um, a bit of a fan. Don't let her know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Please do. Yeah. She's great. And so, yeah, that's interesting. So I didn't I didn't know about that aspect of it. So she so jenny inspired or influenced by some of those teachings integrated that into her already being a like a master eft practitioner and then through that sort of codified and 
So I imagine there are some techniques that have not strict because EFT is really strict, but like certain questions, certain directions, certain techniques that you use yes, within that so, framework. Yeah. So Jenny, Jenny met with Lee Carroll and said, look, I, I'm really keen to blend these together. What do you think? Are you okay with it? And Lee said, yes, go for it. So so the permission was given to blend uh, the work of Cryon with Jenny's EFT knowledge. She has developed the protocol, which is this sort of language. So in terms of certification uh, to be a quantum EFT practitioner, there is a, a, quite a rigorous training. Mm. Not unlike the uh, the clinical EFT certification, actually. So it's quite rigorous to be a practitioner, and it be, again, because we're working with people who may have really big traumas of horrible things happening to them in earlier life. You know, if you think about some of the horrible stuff they used to do to people, you know, centuries ago. So you need to know how to handle that well and keep someone safe as they process this. So it isn't about throwing someone literally into the fire again you're like yeah. you know it has to be done, done really well and and very gently and honoring and um yes yeah, so there's a certain it's not scripted per se but there's certain uh protocols or certain language that helps facilitate the process to happen and we're not cookie cutter practitioners so um I am using my intuition, like my sense with you that that day, if it's the one I'm thinking about, is I got a very clear message was he wants to go there, just offer it to him and see what he says. Like oh, yeah. I, very, I got that message. So that's why I put it to you. It was like we could have gone either way and that was they both were absolutely fine. You would have got results. Uh, but I sensed you wanted to play there, so we went... <laughs> Yeah, I, my my background is more in that direction and like talking to parts and um, and then the clinical EFT is like newer for me. But when I did it, I wanted to do it, you know, very accurately and, and in the way. So because I feel like that's the best way to learn something. And then, like you said, with especially when you're in that territory, I mean, it's impossible to not. You couldn't do it right if you can't improvise when you're dealing with energy that works like that because it's so alive it, it's like it's like dancing i mean i'm a jazz musician for a living so it, that's a very clear metaphor like if you try to just play the part and just say well no no we have to stick to this pattern mm -hmm. you know life doesn't behave that way so you have to be able to kind of adapt your languaging and your your tone and how how much you push and how much you pull back based on what everything is doing so you know, what's what's really interesting about this is that I feel like that territory of talking about, you know, Akashic records and, um, you know, whether you're whether it's literal or not, your past lives and the different things you carry with you. And, you know, the, the mother's womb thing is scientifically real. I just learned about that, how you like borrow the vagus nerve from your mom and her trauma literally gets imprinted to you, which actually explains not my personal life but things i observed as a kid where we were like how does this kid so young have these like oh okay makes sense now right um so it's fascinating to see that but i feel like a lot of the content you could say around that is sort of just like information so you you've got a lot of people who kind of know this stuff and like yeah i've tuned into this about past lives and akashic records and like you get really into it but it doesn't actually do anything <laughs> a lot of the times. And so this is combining, like you just have this cool knowledge and sometimes ways of explaining yourself, which has, I'm not saying that has no value, but to use that in such a way where you're using a technique that's designed to work with trauma and clear energy, yes. you get to take that incredibly fascinating world of all of this stuff but not just be like an interesting way of explaining, oh, this is why I am afraid of dogs <laughs> to like actually, yeah. you know, really deeply clearing whatever that root stuff might be. So I hope it, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I hope more of that, if community would be the word, who's like all in with, you know, reading about Akashic records and things can like find this to really use that interest 
to be something that's incredibly powerful as opposed to just a form of like self-discovery. Mm, nice. Yeah, it, that, that's that thing. It's like knowledge is one thing, but what if you were also able to take the tapping to that knowledge and, like you say, to truly release it at its core at an energy level? Because mm-hmm. we're working, you mentioned being a jazz mu- musician and those nuances, it's vibration, right? This is the same. It's like let's let's clear the vibration and the energy of the body as well. And we've been in a society of wanting to stay in our head, like that has become king, you know, and we have lost the wisdom of our bodies and the language of our bodies, which is our emotions, our feelings, you know, being able to uh, connect with the the four elements, like our our predecessors were very in touch with, with that world. And we have become so focused on from here, from the neck up, it's all around thoughts and we try to override it with thoughts and ego. And meanwhile, there's all this part of us that has so much that for some have lost touch with or are mourning that and they want to get back in touch with it. And this is a way to honour that and bring it back in, uh, which I'm really excited to be part of and has been part of my big healing journey as well, Mm. which is why now I work in the field of helping people also feel that. That's like a calling. This is part of my life purpose. So I'm here. Oh, I'm (laughs) I'm I'm sure it is. (laughs) Yeah, because you're very good at it. And that, uh, Mm. because that is another language from the neck down. It's a language of symbolism and feeling and energy and stuff you can't believe even exists in yourself and memories and and experiences that will just really literally blow your mind because your mind can't even understand or process it it just kind of short circuits it and that's a good thing because it it kind of takes you you get into this space so for me when we did it um I have always had a real strong aversion to knives. Don't like mm. to see them. I mean, it's not gone, but I I remember as a child, if I heard the word blood, there was a there was a pop song at the time that I liked, but there was it said the word blood stains on the carpet uh, is one of the lyrics. And this was a you know on the radio. And I would I would like flood. I would I because mm. I'm hyper visual, so anything Anytime someone says something to me, I see it usually. And so I would see that image and just I would see blood on the carpet and it would send me into a total, I'd be a mess. And I'm a really young kid here. And I don't have any uh, really clear memories of anything actually happening to me with blood or knives. But knives, even seeing them sometimes can trigger that um, response and, and can... I can start seeing some pretty unpleasant things. So it's still weird for me to hold them, but it's like it's evolved. So anyway, when when we did the session, I don't know why that came up, but that similar aversion, that really intense body level thing was coming up. And that you you know, you probably couldn't have not gone there if you tried, because you you felt how strong that was active in me. And, and I was like, yeah, this is this is beyond like some of the other approaches that we might use in that moment if you're willing to go there and so I was feeling all of that and before you knew it I was in the first person and I I had experienced actually a version of this once before in a smaller detail and it it was kind of almost traumatic the the memory of this experience Um, but I was sort of back there and I'm very first person and it's very tribal it looks very old tribal days you know, I'm wearing basically like a loincloth and that's it. And I've got this knife and I am doing some major damage to people, which, you know, the thought of doing that now, like has such an intense reaction in my body. But I, I don't know if maybe if you, I don't know if you remember like I do, what I do remember. some of the tapping Quite was. Um, if we tapped on him as him or... Yes. Yeah. Is that what we did? <laughs> yes. Uh, some of the phrases I remember, and again, a lot of these kind of come in as more intuitively, and you said, I'm killing people. 
Mm. There's only me and I think someone else left. And I said it was a kill or be killed world. Mm. So I was starting to bring that other lesson of the energy at that time was if I don't kill, I'm going to be killed. Like it was at that basic survival level. Uh, so though I do remember saying that to you. And then we freeze framed that and took him out, took that soul. And I did have that soul. Had you take that soul up to the soul planning meeting and going, given that this experience is happening, what is the life lesson? Like, what is it? And and I actually can't remember. I haven't looked at your, your notes, <laughs> but you you got some wisdom and yes. I asked you to bring that wisdom back into that that soul that was and so he that soul of that time could get a sense of why this horrible thing is happening mm. and then we played that through his lifetime as a you know a life that was possibly going to be cut short mm. And actually, I didn't know about, you didn't mention the knives until we came out of that. Mm. And then you said, uh, actually, I've had a fear of knives all, all this life. I hate, I've hate. i hated them. And it was like, oh, that's really interesting. So it wasn't until after we'd done that. Right. Week, that's right. Yep. That you, came, you, you mentioned about how this time you, you have always had a fear of knives. And it was like, oh, that's really interesting. So. It is. Yeah. And that you, I felt that relief, even again, when you said like, it was a killer kill, kill or be killed world. Because mm -hmm. the thing is that the things these point to can be so subtle. Like, I don't know if I even necessarily would have recognized this at the time. But when when we just did that now, even for a second, it's like, yeah, I've, I have often felt this feeling like I've done something horribly wrong, and I need to be punished. I'm, I've felt that since a young age. And I used to maybe blame it on some religious teaching or whatever, but that didn't quite explain it. You know, like, what is this? What, what did I do? I'm just a you know, kid in Pennsylvania. Like, <laughs> you know, I haven't really done anything. But, you know, so these, these little nuances of things we carry that we get used to, um, when you start just exploring some of these types of processes, you, you get a sense of actual relief, and then they make sense often and that's often the way it is i found on both sides of the fence either being the client or the facilitator it's like you the energy does what it needs to do it takes you where it needs to go and then you get the cognitive insight of wow that explains why i've always been afraid of dogs or why i've always hated knives or why i couldn't handle the sight of blood which is so much usually more effective and efficient than okay i need to like i'm going to try to dissect my life and figure out what happened and then i'm going to go try to do a tapping based on what happened you can do that or you can just kind of ask these types of open-ended questions um and if it's safe enough and yeah you might have to you know have done some work but but if you're working with someone like you you're going to be able to pace that appropriately but i don't want to put a safe. limit on it because you can be very yeah. inexperienced and um, I've definitely worked with people who never, it's like their first session doing anything. And we're like in another lifetime or something. And I'm not oh, even a excellent. quantum trained person. It just yeah. goes there, you know. Mm, that's right. And and the thing is too, you know, the level of training, let's say with clinical EFT, that those skills are really good to be able to hold that. Yes. We just, you know, we're, you know, we're able to hold an, a nice safe place for people to, without dropping them into a trauma capsule, we can hold them in a lovely safe space to, because we ourselves won't take ourselves into a trauma and shouldn't, you know, so, so that's where we need a guide. So part of my role is, you know, what, why I'm here is I see my role as a guide to walk alongside, mm. to help someone go to those places um, that our conscious mind has being a gatekeeper to not have us go there it's like yeah. don't go there don't go there but but actually if we want to be free of this it's like if we have someone we trust who can take us there and clear it and now let's go and mine the akash for what are what are the gifts i've got gosh mm. i i was an orator let me let me be let my voice be heard you know so all of these things where i was playing small it's like nah <laughs> time to time to get wow. out 
Yeah. yeah. Well, there's some... And I was thinking mm-hmm. too, there's so much compassion. You know, we have more compassion, say for that that soul that was you, you know, with a, with a sword or, or a knife or whatever. And and the, the, when we start to appreciate actually those were those energy times were really tough. There, there have been some very hard energy times for humans. We've come through a lot, you know, with a very dense energies, a lot of fear based, a lot of trying to control people, and some energies coming in, some people coming in to try and raise things up and have new energies and have more light and love coming in. And the, you know, the energies of that time didn't support it and they were killed for it. So, so as as the humanity evolves and changes there have to be pioneers that are coming in and trying different things you know yeah that's important and i think for that self-compassion thing because a lot of times there's that perspective of almost like i'm a blank slate and why you know why am i struggling so much but you know like you described i mean you don't even have to go back to maybe your grandparents' parents, even in this country, for there to have experienced slavery. And I mean, it's like, you don't even have to go back that far, whether you even believe in like quantum or DNA. Trauma is, you do not have to go far back in history. Why wouldn't we carry that? Why wouldn't that be even as an adaptive mechanism? I mean, if you grew up, if you were born from a mother who was like captive or in this incredibly hardship situation, it would just make sense that we Mm -hmm. would have to come out wired in such a way to be on edge and looking for the danger everywhere. So we really need to kind of like, yeah, we do live in a modern time and we have the internet (laughs) and that's all great, but you could be carrying really dense things that, that can let you cut yourself some slack when you're like, why can't I just stop this habit? It's like, well, there's there's a lot there. And it's honoring that actually, you know, if we're in fight or flight or survival mode, that's not a time where we spiritually grow. Mm -hmm. It's only once we have cleared those deep fears, those core beliefs, those limiting beliefs, once those are cleared, then we can start to spiritually grow. Growing doesn't Mm -hmm. happen when we're in survival mode. So, uh that's why it's exciting to clear the stuff wherever it began. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even have to be consciously known where it is because then people can tap into actually there is a bigger purpose why I'm here and it's about time. I, I think I'm, what do I want to be? You know, where they start to ask those questions um, and raise the whole vibration of this, of humanity up. It's time. You know, like that. I think there's a lot of people that are feeling it's time. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. And there's a lot of people who who are beyond just, okay, what logical thing can, like the, the times have gotten tough enough for enough people that it's like, I think a lot of minds are just open to look, whatever's going to end the suffering, whatever's going to help. I am, I am ready to explore. And um, mm. yeah, on that note, I mean, there's a million other things we could ask about. And by the way, for those of you watching this, I mean, a lot of doors were open from the from the channeled content to the Akashic records, to all these different things that if you have questions about, just, just leave them down below. And then maybe we can do something again if we get questions, but how do people um, reach you to take a quantum session with you or any other things you offer? Yes. So I've got a website, uh, EFT Serenity. Dot CO dot NZ or dot NZ, the last letter of the alphabet because I'm from New Zealand, I say that letter differently. (laughs) Um, So eftserenity.co.nz. And um, just have a look at my website and there's uh, booking booking options there. And um, yeah, I'd love to work with people if, um, and we can just explore, as I say, there's no, there's no beliefs that you have to have. I certainly work very um, much with whatever is on top for you. And we just follow that. Um, but yeah, that's how they can get hold of me. Awesome. I'm in well, New I... Zealand. I do work over Zoom, so I'm actually in your future, um, Evan. Yes. So, um, so I do. I do work. This does work over Zoom. 
Uh, we do. I do see most of my clients are overseas. Ours was over Zoom, so I can vouch for it. Yeah. Yeah. And you were safe, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was great. Yeah, I, I, I highly encourage people to to do it at least once, at least to experience a, a very different, um, very different experience that's very valuable. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. Anything you, else you wanted to add or say before? Oh, I just want to thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, let me give a voice to this. And oh, um, I want to wish people well. You know, there is there's that core part of us, I believe, that is asking to be released and to be free. And um, if that is speaking to you in whatever way, this is one way, um, but just that we are here for a bigger purpose. We're in really big times and... Um, you know, I, I I like the I love the work you're doing actually, and in, in building that community as well. So I want to honor well, thank you, you for the work mm. you're doing as well. Really good to see you. Thanks so much. Yeah, we we'll really appreciate it. And like I said, if people have questions, you can can leave them down below in the comments, and we'll find a way to get to that. And um, yeah, check out Lisa's content. I think you'll really really enjoy it. And we will see you all soon. I hope. Take care. <laughs>